Hi, welcome to Planetary Calendars, Astro Portraits. I'm Ralph Dimitris, one of the Calendars Astrologers. This is part of our music series, and this one is Andrea Bocelli, the great singer from uh, Italy, born September 22nd, 1958, on a Monday, interestingly, at 5.15 a.m. in Pisa, Italy, famous city. His chart is so different from the other musicians that we've looked at. I mean, we've done this whole series of musicians uh, from a wide variety of people, and his chart is just dramatically different. It's amazing, but he is, after all, the only opera singer that we've done. So he's born, to say he's born with the sun in Virgo is to massively understate it, because he's born with the sun at 28 degrees Virgo. But he also has Virgo rising. He also has Pluto, the asteroid Pallas Athena, Venus, the asteroid Juno, Mercury, the asteroid Ceres, and the Sun, all in Virgo. I mean, really, come on. <laughs> it's all towards the rising. In fact, the, the ascendant's 18 degrees, Mercury is 17 degrees, which is Mercury in rulership, Mercury in the responsive ruler, Virgo, Venus in fall in Virgo, two degrees away, with Juno right between this there. Uh, and then the ascendance at 18 degrees, and then Ceres and the Sun are at 26 and 28 degrees. Remember, Ceres is the largest asteroid. And many people believe that the asteroids have a very strong relationship with Virgo. So it just you know compounds that sense. He has in the second house, Libra. He has the North Node in Libra. Uh, Libra is found in many musicians. It's all about balance in the arts. And then he has... Jupiter and Neptune conjunct in Scorpio in the third house uh, at two degrees and three degrees. Scorpio. The moon in Capricorn. He's a Virgo with a moon in Capricorn. Lonnie, where have we heard that one before? 23 degrees Capricorn. And so most of this stuff, you know, from the sun through the moon, they're both below the horizon. Now the Mercury, the Venus are both just above the horizon. They're the rising planets, okay? And then above the horizon are Uranus and Mars. Isn't that interesting? Uranus and Mars. Uranus can be seen without a telescope, but it, it's a very faint sim shimmer. It's in the 12th house, the house that relates to the studio, and then Mars in the 10th house. Mars in Gemini, a Mercury-ruled sign when half of his chart is in Virgo, the other Mercury-ruled sign. This is a tremendously mercurial person. The moon is Saturn-ruled, so where's Saturn? Saturn is in Sagittarius. Huh. Saturn's in Sagittarius, which is Jupiter's sign. Jupiter's in Scorpio, which is Mars's sign, right? Everything's kind of it's like a little bit like a pinball machine, the way energies are bouncing around. But it's a very martial, mercurial chart, which you don't think of for a musician, but maybe for an opera singer. Why? Because unlike Sting, for instance, who's a little bit older than him, he was a writer. He's a composer. He created the music. Andrea did not write the music he's performing. In fact, much of the music he's performing was written in, you know, the early 20th century, the 1800s, the 1700s. I mean, when you do opera, you're doing from this huge catalog of historical work. Even, you know, the popular songs he's many times doing are older pieces. You know, he's done more modern pieces as well, but they, they still have to fit that type of voice. You know, Virgo is, you know, it's the ultimate servant. You know, um, Virgos were always popular to have as children. Why? Because they were great during harvest time because they have great manual dexterity. They're picky. They, they can go through all the little grains and pick out the good ones and get rid of the bad ones. And it was always encouraged to have Virgo girls in your family because, you know, if you could have them working during the harvest, right? Remember in an agricultural society, it's a role about service. So his, he has a very strong sense of, you know, the willingness to, you know, be a servant to his art. Also, to be incredibly perfectionistic about his art. With this much Virgo at the rising, he is a person who's willing to take endless attention to the details. And in many of these musicians, there's been strong Virgo, that willingness to work on it again and again and again. Many times it's in the writing. You know, how many versions of that song do you have to do before you can really get it right? With him, it's in the performance that's at the rising. 
It's at his presentation, his willingness to practice it again and again and again. And because he lost his sight so young, when he's doing it, he's doing it entirely by sound. You know, he has this tremendous memory for music. He can't look at a score. I imagine he can do grail to a score, but he does it so much by sound. He plays piano by touch. You know, this tremendous perfectionist, and they say that genius is the willingness to take endless pains with the details, and he is the quintessential example of that. The quintessential. The fact that he has Mars and Gemini at the midheaven, and the midheaven's in the 10th house, and Hygieia's there at the planet that relates to the health. Uh, part of fortune in the ninth house, in Taurus, the sign of music. So he's been able to travel the world doing this, but part of fortune at 23 degrees, so close to Hygieia, or close to Algol, Algol oftentimes has shown up in charts related to issues with the eyes. Why? Because it's it's the position of the gorgon. You know the um, you know the it relates very strongly to the eyes. This is something that's shown up again. But he's traveled the world, but not been able to see it. But he's been able to hear it, to be able to smell it. I mean, after all, the Italians half of our lives is spent smelling things. I think. But the Mars in, in Gemini, it's about really been about speaking out, about being a voice. He's being a voice for all these composers who came before. It's a fascinating chart. It really is amazing. And the moon in the fifth house is the house of creativity. The moon is at 23 degrees. It's trine the sun. So his emotional discipline in the arts supports his performance at the rising. It's so different from these other musicians' charts. So that's Andrea Bocelli, one of our great singers, one of the great voices of our times. You know, please come see us at Planetary Calendar Astrology on YouTube. We do our portraits like this and larger ones uh, every Tuesday. Then we do our forecasts on Fridays. Uh, you can also find the calendars at Planetary Calendar Astrology along with our books. And when you go to the YouTube channel, please subscribe because it's a big help to us. And besides, if you subscribe, you'll get reminded when you push that little bell when the forecast comes up because you want to know what's going on. Until next time, be well. <laughs>